What are we starting with this week? A I, YouTube comment. Oh. You guys just watched me find the... I didn't actually. You don't look? Oh, it's oh. a Wii Review. So we Review. Oh, I got okay. it right. Didn't yeah, you all starting right. A Wii Review. So this Wii Review comes from Apple Podcasts. If you would like to leave a Wii Review, please go to Apple Podcasts and just type in a lovely little five-star review. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Yeah, go do that, please. Thanks. So it says, <clears throat> caught up. Now what? I've been an avid listener since day one, but fell off listening during COVID as I no longer had my commute to time to listen in. But in the last month, I have binge listened to the last 50 or so episodes and Whoa. now caught up and don't know what to do with myself. Brilliant podcast. So funny and interesting. Tell you what you can do yourself. You can head over to our Patreon where there are bonus episodes. Whoa. Oh. There you go. Also, a brand new podcast. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. A premium that. podcast Ooh. that you can only get right now over on our Patreon. Mm -hmm. So head there if you want to listen to Psy Guys After the Dark. dark. Dun, 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 dun. That's very good. I like that. That's great. Yeah. And one question before we start the show. Mm. Not for us, though. No, not for you. Mm. Not for you guys. What's your favorite crustacean? Ah. Yeah. You know, you got crabs, you got lobsters, mm. you got shrimps, shrimp, mm. and others. Mm -hmm. Let us know which one you like the most. Snails? No. They okay. not, they're not crustaceans. No. no. Let's start the show. Let's start the show. Let's start the show. Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined here by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutford. Correct. Hi, welcome back. This week, I'm going to make your lobs stir. Mm, Lobsters. Stir my lobs, sir. I'll stir your little lobs. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> what is a lob? <laughs> like know. a large throw. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you stir such a lob? Well, you'll, you'll find out in the, in the throws. <laughs> oh, the, I guess we will. In the well, throws then. of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I want to ask you, you if you've, you've heard anything, uh, heard of something called the Order of the Holy Claw or the Leviathan Lobster God. <laughs> Is that a religion? Is this a Jordan Peterson thing? It's more of a cult. That's what I was thinking. Uh, you know what? So religion. Researching this episode, Jordan Peterson came up an awful lot. And really? It, yeah, and it's uh, really frustrating because you just want to look into lobsters. Is he the leader? No. 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 Okay. He couldn't lead. No, don't be mean to Jordan <laughs> Peterson. <laughs> be nice. No. We're being nice to Jordan Peterson yes. today. Okay. Okay. He deserves it. Not a single mean phrase about that man. No. So anyway, Jordan Peterson keeps on coming up whenever I'm looking up the, looking up the stuff because obviously he said the dumb stuff about the lobster. Oh, no mean things you said. That's not a mean thing about Jordan it's Peterson. It's just about it's a dumb true. thing he said. It's not dumb. That's very interesting. Yeah, it can be dumb and interesting. It's interesting. It's not dumb. Yeah. Love Island. People is just use it as a very dumb. as a thing they talk about as a joke. It's quite. I find it really interesting. Okay. Actually. I'll 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 be nicer to Tim. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to say it's dumb if it's if it's if if. No, that's well, you fine. can think it's dumb if you want, Corey. I, I, no, I it don't can be dumb that. and interesting. I just like the fact that you don't broke your own rule it. straight away. <laughs> I think it's quite funny. <laughs> yeah, I was, I'm gonna. Do, I'll no do mean it. things about Jordan Peterson. Anyway, Jordan Peterson came up because it's dumb thing about the lobster. Yeah, that was the, that was the joke. <laughs> yeah, so just leave it in. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Right. We've spent too long on this. The lobster cult. So the lobster cult. You guys haven't heard of this cult of lobsters. Is it a cult of people or a cult of lobsters? I, cult... I assume it's a cult of people that worship lobsters. Well, not lobsters. Lobster. Lobster. Okay. Well, okay. Let's let's. I, I actually want you, you all to figure this out, right? Okay. I, I want you to try and figure this out. So Leviathan lobster god. What do you think might be um what what might be the goal here with a lobster, and what you know about the word Leviathan, and what you know about the word god? Is this a particularly old no, lobster? I don't know. Oh, that, that old comes into it. The oldest, biggest lobster. That's oh. that is basically the idea, right? So, oh, so it's real. Well, no, yes okay. and no. So there was a Facebook group. Okay. <laughs> oh um, my god, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel now with this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Came up on my TikTok, and I was like, "That's funny." <laughs> that sounds in funny. the description. I was like, "I want to look into that." I know, I know, some. I could, I could talk. I could make this into an episode, and so I will. Why not? Yeah. Why not? I can, I can do exactly. what I want. So <clears throat> he's gone mad with power. <laughs> it was all leading up to this <laughs> lobsters it's all lobsters Luke um, so uh, there's a Facebook group called plans to create and worship our leviathan lobster god uh, essentially they vow to raise their crustacean leader um, and uh, basically just feed it and help it molt until it's a giant size and uh, it can be their god and lead them 
Um, and it says, we are going to take a lobster, help it mold its shell over several generations and create a Leviathan God. Here we will plan our God's birth and rise to divinity. Um, it, <laughs> yeah. So, so the idea is to take a lobster. Yeah. And this is really a bonus episode topic, isn't it? <laughs> the idea is to take a lobster yeah. and let it grow and continue to help it grow so it can live forever and over multiple generations, let it continue growing and all that. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then it will be big enough to be a god. A lobster um, is one of these animals that can theoretically grow and grow forever. That's where I was getting to. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the idea here is that lobsters are, people say lobsters are biologically immortal, which means they, they can't die. We'll get into that in a, in a bit. But that's where this this came from. Um, and the the page was created in uh, June of 2020. So it's been been running so it's for a bit. It's recent. Well, I mean. Relatively. Well, I, suppose, well, I mean. It's, Compared it's, to like Christianity. That's, that's quite old. Oh, I suppose if you compare many things to Christianity, they're quite... Yeah. yeah. I'm quite young compared to Christianity, I suppose. I'm quite old compared to this religion. <laughs> <laughs> you can be one of the elders. Yeah. I remember yeah. when this religion started. Ah, uh, young, young lobster when I was your age. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there, there were um, <laughs> over 23,000 members on the Facebook group. Lots of people joined it. And I actually also found a website called leviathanlobstergod.com. Um, and what's interesting is that they do beach cleanups. Um, the, so, it, like it says, one of our primary forms of outreach includes massive scale beach cleanups around the globe. Aww. Get involved today to help stop the negative effects caused by litter, pollution, and more. So, oh, that's this quite nice, actually. Yeah, the silly Facebook group has turned into like an actual sort of project to um, sort of, it, it says, improve life for all. Feeling down, needing attention, our social groups satisfy your thirst for interaction while providing a constant source of humor and, and inspiration. Mm. We even donate a part of each purchase from our store to marine charity. Um, and they also talk about. Um, Raising a lobster god, it says, This cannot be understated. Our lorb must molt a great many times before it will be able to take over in an official capacity. We have to provide security for the lorb. Essentially, uh, lorb meaning um, lord, lobster, god. Lorb. Uh, lorb. 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 Like yeah. lord, but lob. It's a good name. Yeah. yeah. Lorb. Lorb. Are they, yes. Are they actually raising a lobster? I don't think so. <laughs> so they haven't selected a lobster yet? I've not seen a lobster that's been raised. Um, they're, they're just prepping the lobster raising process. I mean, I, I'm going to be honest. I think it's mostly a joke, and I think really? that yeah, and I think that some people took advantage of it to do some good in the world, which I think is really lovely, and that's why I wanted to talk about it. Nice. Um, and moving on from that, I think maybe this this kind of opens up the idea of immortality with lobsters. So we spoke about immortality before, mm. um, and so now I'm going to talk about I guess the feasibility of an immortal lobster god and the kind of science behind that. Yeah, does mm. that make sense? Yes. This really is a bonus yeah. episode, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, if you like more deranged stuff like this, go to our Patreon. <laughs> We've got so many of these. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we genuinely did one bonus episode where we we figured out the science of Christmas, right? Oh, that was a while about ago. Santa. Yeah, that yeah was, about Santa. That yes. was back in 2019. That's, back in 2019? Yeah. Damn, good times. Well, we recorded it in 2019 and released it. In 2020. In 2020. There you go. There you go. Head head to the Patreon and uh, check all those out. Lots of crazy science that we mm. just chat about. So lobsters. What's a lobster? A crustacean mm -hmm. with big pincers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any what? Anything else you know? Quite about tasty, lobster? apparently. Although I don't think I've had lobster. Oh, lobster's great. Red. It's really good. Oh, well, yeah, you're orange. Right. When you cook it. Really? What color are they before you? Cook well, they're them? they're still red, but they're, they're not pinky. quite as. Um, oh, okay. We'll get a I'll get a picture up for you. They're just sunburned. <laughs> I mean, they're burned. They're burned them into boiling water. Yeah. So okay. a, a lobster. They're, I mean, they're a, a deeper, a deeper color than um, than right. you see when they're cooked. Obviously, similar to um, shrimp. They're more of a sort of black, uh, a, a blacky, browny color usually. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Google lobster if you're listening on the podcast. They yeah. are a lot looks darker like, than you'd expect. Looks like someone shoved it up a chimney. <laughs> I think I've been misled by the Little Mermaid. That was a yeah. crab. Oh, yeah. Well, then I haven't. <laughs> no, 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 I've been seriously misled by the little <laughs> Um I think crabs have um, six legs, though, don't they? Or they've got six or eight legs. They've got six legs and then the pincers. So yeah, so they've got eight ah. legs. Whereas lobsters are a decapods. They have ah, yeah. eight legs plus pincers. Yeah, well, ten legs actually. Do the pincers count as legs? Yes, they do count as legs. The <sighs> pincers are legs. So, uh, uh, so what? What's the difference between a leg and an arm? Why aren't they arms? There's not much difference. An arm. Well, that's well, my tell point. It, tell that to us. So he's got eight legs and two arms. I've no. got four legs. 
<laughs> some of which I can grab with. You got four limbs, okay? They've yeah. Got, they've, they're, they're pincers are legs. Why are they legs? They're, why are they not arms? They can grab with them. Yeah, we could just call them limbs. But seriously, why are they legs and not arms? Because it's just how we—it's just what we call them. They're just legs. So we should limbs, think of them really. as limbs, but limbs. we call them legs. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. I don't like that. But oh, it's weird uh, rule. <laughs> so you can't grab stuff with legs yeah, unless you, you use can. both legs at the same time. Oh, you can I absolutely grab something with legs. Earlier. I dropped it on the floor. Sure, but not in like layman discussions. No, stop trying to grab me. Corey's trying to grab me with his legs. I grabbed your trousers. Yeah, good you, for you. You guys do this anyway. Give me you your trousers. Give them to me. I'm pulling them with my toes. All right. Well, sure, you've proved your point. <laughs> no, so, interestingly, this is what I'm trying to get to, but you, you keep on getting stuck on the legs thing. Mm. Lobsters have claws on how many pairs of their legs? None, because they're arms. Lobsters, so, true lobsters, have claws on the first three pairs of legs. What? With claws on the first, on the like, a very large claws on the first pair. Usually one really? is large. So they have the tiny other. claws on the... Little the close, two rows back. Little close. So in my wow. opinion, they now have six arms and four legs. Sure. Okay, okay buddy. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're going to join my cult of renaming lobster limbs? I don't think you can just call it a cult. Mm. It, well, they yeah. other things are cult, most definitely. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so lobsters, they're invertebrates. They've got, uh, th this, it, they've got a sort of hard outer exoskeleton shell. Uh, they eat, they're nocturnal, which is cool. They are, bo they're bottom dwellers. They sort of scavenge for dead animals but they can also eat live fish just and you know put them in their little mouths just mm. grab and have a snack yeah um, um obviously we eat some of them as well um and they've got sort of a segmented body uh like i said five pairs of legs so 10 legs total um and uh yeah so it, it usually it, like it's one or more like, i mean it's really it's one or more pairs of those legs are are modified into pincers mm. um as I said, true lobsters have three sets of pincers, but two large pincers at the front. Um, and their eyes, you probably know this, they've got compound eyes on the sort of movable mm, stalks. stalks. Yeah, which is really cool. Oh, yeah. They're, oh, they're so cute. Like snails. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like they're like yeah. hard, snippy snails. Yeah. 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 Um, and they've got um, long antenna um, legs at the back, which are for sort of swimming and then like a sort of long abdomen with that sort of like sort of tail. As well, you know, the sort of lobster tail. Yeah, like a big oh, fin. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so they flex the tail um, to sort of uh, they 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 flex the tail to sort of swim. It's kind of like a flipper. So they yeah. can do that as well. Like yeah. a mermaid. Yeah, I was gonna say like a dolphin. The Beautiful lobster mermaid. mermaid. Yeah. Merlob. <laughs> I know. What came first, Lob the lobster or the mermaid? <laughs> <laughs> All oh, lobsters are actually very caring lovers, so probably the mermaid. Um, <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't think it with those big meaty claws, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, they can do a lot. Um, where would you find lobsters? Um, in the true sea. lobsters <laughs> at my local restaurant. Yeah, in the big fish tank where yeah. they live happily ever after. <laughs> Jam, I want you to sit in that restaurant and watch that tank all night. Okay. Um, I don't Some have of them the time. Go on holiday, for don't they? <laughs> yeah, they do. They take them out and they go to the VIP section. Um, in the back. Out the back, yeah. <laughs> and they have such a good time on holiday, they don't come back. Yeah, the lovely gentleman in the white hat comes through, takes it out the back, and yeah, I guess they spend the rest of their life there. It must be really good. <laughs> Very warm, I'm told. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a jacuzzi, it's a bubble, you know, bubble bath. <laughs> We're joking about something very sad. <laughs> Where God. specifically? I hope there's no lobsters. In listening. the Mediterranean. In the Mediterranean? No. Yeah? 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 Great. I think a better question. I guess be, so. Where do you not find lobsters? On the land. On land, yeah. Well, you can find a lobster. Oh, my. You don't In my fridge, because I don't eat them. That's true. <laughs> my point is you can find lobsters pretty much everywhere, um, except for... Mount Everest. Okay. The Sahara. <laughs> right. Well, you can find true lobsters in... All seas apart from polar ones, and the and when it's really really deep. But otherwise, they're pretty much everywhere. So lobsters are pretty they're pretty solid. They're you can find them most places. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's the same lobster, the same sort of large lobsters that are useful for eating, um, you know. But they're they're true lobsters, pretty much everywhere. Versions of yeah, different yeah, yeah you know, like you've got a uh, Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue. You've got actually got red and blue lobsters as well. You can get a blue lobster. You guys know about that? Mm. Oh, I have, I have heard of it. Find them in the Arctic. I. I just said you don't find them in polar seas. 
good for you. <laughs> <laughs> we have tiny little ones in Australia, and they get in, if you find like a little pond or something, mm -hmm. you might find tiny li little lobster-looking things, and they're called yabbies. Called um, they're called yabbies. 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 Yeah. Why do but they look. They, I don't think they are lobsters, but they're crustaceans, definitely. Mm -hmm. But they do look like tiny, tiny little lobsters. That's cute. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. They're cool. Well, we've got lots of different. I mean, we've got um, the European lobster, which is a sort of dark green. It's in um, it's uh, in the European Atlantic um, coast and the Mediterranean Sea. And there's different lobsters in South Africa, which only gets to be about four or five inches long. Um, and just it, it says on Britannica, it is of little commercial value, which I think no. is a really rude thing to say about an animal that's just. Like, we we can't use it for anything. That like we can't make money using this animal because it's not big enough for us to eat. They don't need to have commercial value. Yeah, they don't need to. They've got... have value by themselves. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. The content of their character. So now moving on to something maybe a little less fun than lobsters. Oh God. Aging and senescence. Do you oh. know what senescence is? You should. We spoke about it over a year ago, so you probably won't. Was it during episode fifty? The science of immortality. Yeah. 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 No, I don't remember. No. Nothing. Senescence. Senescence. I, well, I can. Has a yes. I get the word essence. Fancy from word it? for aging. I mean, it's it's kind of the one of the root causes of aging. Aging, really. Is it telomeres? Oh. Well, the, it's not. What the, do you think? The, I was going to say the telomere thing. It's not quite telomere. So, basically, aging. Lots of lots of things can cause aging. We don't really understand fully the biological cause of aging um, entirely, but senescence is something that happens in cells, wherein um, they sort of um, some some sort of things about them change. It, you have stable growth arrest. Essentially, they stop developing normally, and they stop sort of replicating in the way that they normally would, and that they just kind of stop doing that. They just kind right. of chill out, which is what happens. Which is kind of what happens in aging. It's one of those things that. Um, causes cause you to age um in that like you know it it, it, it stops this it, like senescence is a normal thing that happens right you can stop tumor progression all of this thing but also it's a it's a big thing that cause causes sort of age-related disease because um obviously like um senescent steps um sort of senescent cells um don't operate the way that normal cells do and it you basically as you become older more cells become senescent so is senescence the thing that is meant to go off that prevents cells from becoming cancerous that's that's is, apoptosis is, really oh, okay. so apoptosis is cell death yeah um senescence is just kind of like cells chilling out and not doing right it, not doing much not dividing anymore and they're just they're just chilling yeah and whereas apoptosis is cell death which is what's supposed to happen when it, when a cell be kind of um becomes well, when that kind of becomes dysregulated then a cell will mm. not uh, die and it will continue dividing and that's kind of that's kind of implicated in cancer. So it's like cell cancer. retirement. Yeah, mm. they don't die. They just they go on holiday. You're like, okay, I'm they don't make any more babies. I'm just yeah. chilling. Mm. Yeah. So um, I mean, and yeah. obviously in aging, you've got like like. Can you describe aging for me, either of you? Just wrinkly. What, what on. I was going to say going wrinkly, going grey, getting tired, getting sluggish, losing your muscle mass. <laughs> yeah, um, you know. And it's it's sort of a gradual decline in functionality, essentially, yeah. right? And that's and obviously, sort of dying of old age when when you when all of that sort of damage to your cells, to your DNA accumulates, eventually your body is just like, well, eh, it's not yeah. much good. You can't do much else, you know. Like there's um like and it will it kind of happen. The thing is, it kind of happens at the same rate kind of across your entire body. Usually, I mean, obviously, some parts will be more stressed than others. Some parts might give out before others, but yeah, aging kind of happens just like it, it's just, just this sort of slow process as, you know, um, you mentioned the telomeres. We'll get into that in a sec. But um, as your body essentially gets older, it starts to lose function um, and eventually it's just like, well, too much function is gone. That's it. And again, as I've said, we don't necessarily know all of the biological causes of aging, but we're kind of getting there. We know some we know about senescence and we know about telomeres. What, are, what, do, you, what do you know about telomeres? Jam, do you want to take this? Yeah, go for it. They are the ends, I'm going to butcher this, but to, to my knowledge, they're like the ends of the DNA that slowly get chopped away yeah. every time they replenish. Yeah, so on the end of your DNA, you've actually got telomeres. These are these little things, the sort of, think of them as little caps on the end of mm. just sort of excess bits of code that you don't need for anything. The only reason that they're there is because when, when you sort of um, replicate your DNA, you can lose a little bit every sort of time, right? And... Uh, in order to it like lose a little bit from the end every sort of time because there's like you know um, faulty processes all of that and to stop that from impacting like really important sort the of the actual DNA 
yeah. yeah, the actual DNA with all your with all your important sort of genes and whatnot. You've got these bits on the end called telomeres, and if you so as you age, your telomeres will shorten and shorten and shorten over like countless divisions um, and like sort of replications of your DNA. And it gets to a point where once the telomeres are gone, it's like, oh no, now my genes are starting to be affected. Oh dear. Yeah, and that's implicated in a lot of um, age-related diseases. Um, uh, and it's also like, you know, it's one of the, I mean, and you know, aging is a massive risk factor for cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, neurodegenerative disorders. Um, and I mean, the sort of, um, the sort of shortening of the telomeres is one reason that that um, is one reason that, that happens, essentially because your DNA just gets all jacked up, yeah, as you get older. So the the shortening of your telomeres will lead to senescence of your cells or apoptosis, which is um, sort of programmed cell death, which is essentially where your cell is like, oh no, I'm not working properly, I'm gonna die, <laughs> and then the cell dies and it gets sort of digested by your body and um, sort of uh, recycled usually, um, and. If you've got people with shorter telomeres um, have an increased sort of uh, incidence of diseases and like lower survival rates um, and you can you can sort of change the you can sort of change the rate of sort of decay of your telomeres depending on different life like the different lifestyle choice that, choices that you lead right like so I mean obviously like um, if you're out drinking alcohol doing drugs and smoking and I don't know um, eating Fought, processed fatty foods um, and playing American football without exercising then wait no playing American football you'll be fine not playing exercising. American football damages your telomeres yeah, I don't know mm. I was thinking the concussion is probably not good for you but <laughs> your telomeres though <laughs> I was, honestly honestly I was thinking what are things that are bad for you and the, f the last thing to come to mind was American football <laughs> American football will, probably will not shorten your telomeres, no. But um, no, like obviously all of those things, sort of like uh, smoking, drinking, all, all of those sort of general risk factors for say cancer or um, you know, like other sort of like uh, serious diseases, you know, all of those will um, will can increase the shortening of your telomeres. Uh, if you have a better diet, you're you remain more active. You can shorten the uh, you can reduce the shortening of your telomeres and um, sort of at the very least stop excessive telomere damage from happening right so doing all of this can not necessarily make you stop aging but it can slow the process of damage to your dna that makes sense mm. so it's really important if you want to not age to not have your telomere shorten quickly so that kind of brings us on to the lobsters again do you, do you want to hazard a guess as to why lobsters might be functionally or biologically immortal as people say that telomeres heal themselves Kind Everybody. of, yeah. Or they have just ludicrously long telomeres. <laughs> just, the, the entire <laughs> lobster is telomeres. That entire tail. <laughs> I'm all telomeres. Te te <laughs> That's what the eye stalks are. They're just telomeres. <laughs> <and> they're <bursting> <laughs> yeah, no. So um, basically because lobsters don't go through senescence, right? Their cells don't ever stop sort of acting normally. Mm. They just continue to act normally. And th it's because they constantly are repairing their DNA. They've got something called telomerase. Um, that they you might have heard of that before. We had right? yeah, we've spoken about it before. I yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you think that does? It heals telomeres, replenishes them. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I think we have spoken about it before. Do we have this as well, just in lower amounts? Yeah. 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 That's it. Awesome. So we do have telomerase. It's not. It's 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 present. It, most other animals have it, right? It's just um, once you get past um. Like once you're not in an embryo anymore, like once you're past that stage of your life, oh. you tend to have just like not very much of it, and it's not enough to rebuild the telomeres. Can right. you just inject it? No, I was thinking about this, right? I was thinking like I feel like we're we're getting to a point of we must be getting close to stopping, not stopping, but like at least slowing aging yeah. significantly, mm. right? I mean, I guess. I, this is what I wanted to talk about actually, like because obviously this this is the this is the episode topic and, and all that. But what I re really the point of this episode that I wanted to get to was just a conversation about stopping aging mm. and and all of that because I feel like we must be getting to a point of like not aging uh, as fast at the very least soon. Obviously, we don't understand the first step would be to understand how aging happens. It's a very complex process, as I've said, but we understand a little bit about it, and that's just one step before stopping it or slowing it, and then. You, you live forever until, you know, I don't know, you die in a war or you starve to death because Someone takes you out. big papa capitalism yeah. is uh, hit by a car. stealing the food from your mouth. Mm. Yeah. Is telomere 
A's, telomerase, mm-hmm. is it just a chemical or is it a process? So it's an enzyme. Sorry. Right. So, so you, uh, if I if I say something A's, yeah, um, the ASE yep. sort of um, suffix usually denotes an it usually denotes an enzyme. Right. So, so to, you, if you could get it into a cell, oh, oh yeah. it would just automatically find the DNA and or float towards the DNA eventually and then heal the telomere. Well, I mean, one would assume that uh, yeah, one would assume that if you were like since we have the since we already have the capacity for telomerase to be used, it's just a case of ensuring that that, is, that remains switched on to the appropriate degree in humans for Wow. So if you could just figure out a way of I mean, you could use either um CRISPR Cas9 to add a gene for uh, like generating telomeres after being an embryo or um, do that from an embryo stage. Yeah, well, we have the gene. Yeah, but if you can it's a case of put it in it. in it's such a way that we know it doesn't affect anything else, then that's a lot of aging yeah. fixed. It's just mm-hmm. getting that past an ethics board. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's a ca- we could tr- you could try it in other anim- in other animals. Yeah, and I think it's a case of trying to get it to switch on, right? Because the gene is there. Yeah. So we have the enzyme. We already have a human enzyme. Right. It's not like we're trying to um, modify. A lobster. I mean, th- the thing is, right? It might be more complex than than we're aware of. I'm mm. sure someone. There's probably someone listening, um, or watching right now, who is studying this specifically. And if you are, please do let us know because we always love hearing from people that are um, studying things that we bring up, and we always love, um, you know, people sort of enlightening us mm. on their topics of study. But it, it probably is more complex than that. But on the face of it, the problem seems fairly simple. Right. Obviously, there are, there are sort of um, hurdles there, but the problem seems fairly simple in that there is something mm. that we that we produce naturally in, in like sort of in embryo that if we were to produce later in life may help us slow the process of aging, which is really cool. So it's a case of like, obviously, like you have you still have that gene, presumably. Mm-hmm. It's just a case of making sure it switches on to the appropriate degree and it doesn't impact any other mm. um, cellular, any other cellular function, which I don't know. I think if you like the fact that we could be so close to slowing one part of aging, it's pretty cool, right? So have we never tried this before? To my to my knowledge, I don't I don't know how many sort of human studies there are on this. Because the way you're describing it, it almost sounds like we should have tried it already, or at least like thought up a way. At least know. on an animal. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah it seems like I, it's like the I mean. lowest hanging fruit. Yeah. <laughs> so I looked into it, and actually there are some studies like over the. I mean, from sort of. Some ideas from 2002 up until 2015, 2018, of people looking at how uh, telomerase or telomerase, or however you pronounce it, it doesn't matter, right? I say telomerase. Um, can we can be in gay now, is that? Um, telomerase. <laughs> for those listening, Jamp just made it, just, Jamp just did a gay, uh, a, a gay, a gay the, hand the gay sign. thing. Yeah, a gay hand sign. The limp wrist. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't yeah. being homophobic with no reason. Um, <laughs> Not like you. Sure. At least you had a reason. Yeah, yeah, usually doesn't have a reason. <laughs> uh, usually, my reason is that it's fun. Okay, oh. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, there seems to be studies on it. Um, spe- uh, specifically one that looked at how it sort of stopped or slowed or reversed the aging clock. Um, with human cells and culture to give them, uh, basically applying telomerase. Um, what about which human is, cells when they're like stranded in the forest? I would have said human cells in America. There's no culture there. <laughs> oh ho ho. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> but this obviously is in vitro, not necessarily in vivo. So it's not in a full person. It's just some cells that we cultured, but we're we're working towards it. Yeah. So yeah, it seems that if we if we figure out how to harness the sort of telomerase and regulate that, obviously, again, as I've said, there's more than just dumping a bunch of it into a cell and hoping it does fine because you'll have to make sure it's regulated to the right degree. Like, and obviously doing studies on humans is just difficult altering human dna just to stop people from aging it's just a little bit like is, is that gonna is that gonna easily pass an ethics board because is it is it super necessary because it gets into the question of you know right we we try to stop death as much as possible but at some point we recognize that death is sort of natural right inevitable well i feel like this <laughs> the problem with this with like death I, like cheating death essentially like getting to the point where you don't die is that ultimately you're putting off something that you will still eventually have to experience i refuse and it, it makes death even harder because like so i talk to friends sometimes about death um because i'm that kind of guy <laughs> and because i i Fun actually feel quite 
I don't feel scared of death. I feel quite excited. It's quite interesting. Um, but <laughs> not that I'm like willing it on, but I'm like, when that happens, name. it's going to be like, it's like going on the scariest roller coaster ever because you have no oh, idea absolutely. what's about to happen. Yeah. And that's kind of, woo, cool. Whereas I have friends who like, I talk to them about that, talk to them, I mention it and they're like, I don't think about it. I'm like, but you know that you will have to mm. eventually think about it. So you're just putting off something that you will eventually have to think about. And the thing is about like, it makes death even more sad because when someone dies, it's obviously horrible, but you know they weren't going to live forever anyway. But if everyone's living forever, it's going to be so much harder when someone doesn't and so much mm. harder when you then have to. I, if you have to, because you I, might just get hit by a truck or something. Well, yeah, obviously. I mean, I think if you do that, then safety is going to go through. I think the world would change drastically if people were able to live forever. Because, yeah, true. I mean, obviously, I people would eat the rich. I think, Ge- literally, like, would literally eat them. Um, <laughs> no, like, but genuinely, like, if, imagine if you could live forever. Forever, you could just continue accumulating sort of wealth. I mean, it was in the film In Time. Forever, do you yeah. guys see the film In Time? No, it's just in, uh, it's Justin. Oh, with Justin Timberlake. Yeah, Justin Timberlake. I saw the trailer. No. It's a great concept. Not that great a film, but I love it. Mm. Um, essentially, in that people are able. To, it, uh, you, essentially, instead of currency. Oh, they time. Trade, they your, trade time as currency. Oh, yeah. Yes. Your, the length of your life as currency. Yes. So there's yeah. people that are rich and live forever. They can, like basically live for hundreds of years. Yeah. And there's different levels of cities, right? Because obviously, the really poor people live in just like sort of rubbish run down places and the ultra wealthy live basically it's our world right now but um it's all about time on your wrist rather than um than actually having actual actual money and this is the thing it, it would end up being that initially what would probably happen is only the rich would live forever mm. and so they would continue to to gain wealth and then would that really trickle down to everyone being able to live forever would they want to allow it because at, that, at some point you'd have to think well we're not overpopulation is not an issue now right it's not. Anyone that says that overpopulation is an, issue, is an issue hasn't looked into it enough because the world isn't overpopulated. There's a poor distribution of the resources, right? Um, and again, overpopulation is generally something that is it's just racism wearing a different hat. Um, but overpopulation would be an issue if people didn't die. And the only ones to die mm. were the ones that did something real dumb or, you know, died in some kind of accident. It's, or got murdered. I would say that's dying in some kind of accident. Mm. An intentional accident. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else's intention. Yeah, not yours. I mean, I didn't intend to be murdered. Whoopsie doodle. <laughs> Oops. Oh, won't do that again. <laughs> yeah, you probably won't. <laughs> <You> probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> but unless you're Rasputin, in which case, <laughs> happened a few times. Um, no, yeah, I, I think that it's it, it. The world would fundamentally change if we weren't. Uh, if we were no longer trying to stave off uh, death. But yeah, I mean, you just uh, you didn't do some kind of eventual wealth tax because the whole. Thing about like what you're describing where like resources are collected into one person or family mm. would be the case if not for inheritance tax like it would just be the case um that rich families get rich forever um if in the same way that it would be for an immortal person if you could just pass down your money without any taxes whatsoever um like you're because the, the, the entity still survives across mm. multiple families um so you just have a situation where like you'd have to replace inheritance tax with some form of tax on like being alive for a very long time or like wealth so your wealth would be taxed rather than your income being taxed yeah the world that we have now is just not set up to deal with that right everything would really have to change and even having children right you wouldn't be able to have children you'd have to have you'd have to have limits on children or send Mm. them off to other planets or realistically i think if we do have people oh my god if we have people able to live for an ex like an incredibly long time, you could just send people off to other planets. Yeah, you wouldn't need. Oh, true. Stasis. Yeah. You could just have people live as oh, long as you're able to have enough resources ship. or yeah. re- recycle them. Or you can have them live on a ship. Yeah, cool. It's cool, right? So if you want to have yeah, a baby, cool. you have to change planets first. You set up a colony. Yeah, that is that is that is that is pretty cool though. Yeah. Or I mean, you. I mean, it would end up probably being the wealthy could have pl- have kids on this planet, and then you just send. They them can away. have their own planet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. That is that. Like, I, I really like the idea of seeing what would happen to human society. Although I don't know how the human mind would deal with being able to live for a long time. You'd forget stuff. You'd you'd go nuts, Probably, right? Yeah. You'd go. You'd have to go something. Well, you just have to figure out those problems as well. Yeah, I suppose. And I mean, I guess as well. What What's interesting to me is that I think that 
once sort of biologic if biological immortality or biological like incredibly long life you know like extending life mm. by decades were to happen and we were to push that forward um let's say it was possible i mean conceivably it's possible in other animals so th there it could be it could be possible in humans potentially um we could work on those problems we didn't think that transplants were possible you know and now they are so mm. many things have, have moved forward but i think one main thing that is kind of macabre that would need to be brought in if we did extend life sort of um not not even just sort of uh forever conceivably but just for a longer time you'd need to be a, you'd need to allow people to die if they wanted to you know yes i mean people above you could probably have to limit it to being people above a certain age but you would have to let people die if they but wanted to but you would surely oh wait no cuz you were potentially modifying the genome to make telomerase so it's not even like you could just stop taking your telomerase injections if your body is now producing it mm -hmm. um you have to f you have to have the option of dying yeah which i feel like ultimately everyone would pick eventually because you would eventually experience all the things mm. enough times um and become tired of defending this sort of fleshy suit that you have to defend or at least defending your fleshy brain or whatever whatever it is that makes you you mm. eventually you would go okay what's the next adventure and the next adventure would be that's what happens when you die yeah yeah i think i mean gosh i mean I just uh, the, the number of things we could do with an extended human life right the, the number of things that we could study the number mm -hmm. of things that we could achieve i don't know i just feel like i feel like wars would probably end not necessarily, but I feel like it'd be, you'd be less, okay, if you have the potential of a longer life, you have more on at stake, right? More to risk. You'd be less inclined to sort of cut that short. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Sorry, say that again. Right. I, I feel like, I feel like you'd, people would be less inclined to go to war or to put themselves in a position where they are more likely to die because... If that was the only thing that could lead to your death. Yeah, that's the only thing that could lead to your death. And you're gambling. You're, you've got more you're gambling for. Because it's... Okay, let's say you're 20, right? Or you're 30 or you're 40. If you're 40, you're like, oh, well, my life is like half over, right? Yeah. You're not you're not losing as much. Obviously, no one wants to... Most people don't want to die, right? But if you're 40 and you're only going to live to 80, halfway through your life, if you're 40 and you can live to 200... Or three hundred or five hundred, you're like, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. And I, I feel like it'd be a much harder sell, like sending people off to war when it's like, they could live, they could live forever. Why are you sending mm. them off to war and letting them die at the age? It, it would be, I think it'd be a much harder sell. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Not to say that it's not a hard sell now, but um, yeah, I just think a lot of things. I think a lot of things would change, even if we extended life by even fifty years. You know. Well, you'd hope that more people who operate in the world would be wise if they've lived for a, a bunch of time. Like you, you, you've got to hope that at, at least there is a, not a causation, but a correlation between length of time on Earth and wisdom. More, not more for people everybody. have more experience. Yeah, right. not for everybody, but you live through more ages, you've lived through more change, um, and you'd hope that some of that would crystallize into a, a certain level of wisdom. I think there are two lines that could go down, really. I think the first is... Well, which one do you want first? Optimist, optimistic or pessimistic? Pessimistic uh, first. Pessimistic first? Yeah. Okay. So, if I'm being entirely pessimistic, I think that people don't accumulate evidence to sort of refute their own beliefs. They accumulate evidence to confirm their own beliefs. Sort of the conf confirmation bias. They will mm. ignore things that <laughs> disagree with what they... I think sort of already believe um it's very hard to get people to change their mind it's very hard to get old people to change their mind as as we're all aware like if you've if you've spent 80 years of your life believing something it's very hard to stop believing that yeah, you have to admit to yourself that you've been wrong for exactly how many decades i think we'll figure that out as well though we'll sure. figure out plasticity of mind i mean ideally yeah yeah so there's there's that right there's there's the the, the, the fact that people are stubborn and difficult to deal with at the best of times and if you've got people living to over 100, 200, yeah. it, things that are entrenched, it'd be okay, because social progress happens, right? Because people say, I don't like how this is now. I will now educate the gonna, next generation. Yeah, and yeah. the next generation pushes forward a little bit more and pushes forward a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. But over the course of one person's life, I think it'd probably be harder to get them to continue to push forward because 
they'll be like, oh, well, that's not how it was back in my day. Oh, well, things seem to be fine now. Back in my day when I was 90. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you might see a stalling of cert of progress in certain areas. Yeah. Um, because you just have an increased population of people who are just like, no, I don't care. But if I'm gonna if I'm gonna not be pessimistic, not be a doomer about it, positivity here. I think that potentially if you if you live long, you can have more experiences, and we know that experiencing people of different cultures, experiencing different pe people different to yourself, tends to lead you to being less bigoted, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there could be there could be that aspect as well, right? That if you live long enough, you can accumulate enough experiences that you we kind of wipe out bigotry just through people being like, oh, well, what's the point, mm. you know? Well, and also like we did that, um, I think it was a clip about consciousness mm. and consciousness, the, the one theory of consciousness being like, uh, consciousness arises from independent, interdependent systems. So like if uh, some aspect of your, the back of your brain is um, the output of like one section of your brain is changed by the output of another section of your brain, they may as well basically become one conscious system together, right? So um, if, if you have, like if, if you're, something happens in your, say, to be simplistic, your right hemisphere, and it has literally no effect at all on your left hemisphere, then there's no reason for those two things to work together um, and they might not become one conscious system. But if something happens on the right side of your hemisphere and it affects the output on the left side of your hemisphere or the back of your hemisphere or on in your stomach or in your leg or whatever, then those things may as well and do act as a conscious single entity, mm -hmm. which is the, that's the theory, right? Um, and so as we become more interconnected, as we, because what we're doing with like the internet and what we did with like mail um, and transport and all those things is we're essentially um, creating causal systems that link together different people where like m suddenly my the output I give has a causal effect on some person mm. around the world. Right now, I am creating sounds with my voice box that are creating brain signals in people's minds around the world, right, mm. who are listening to this podcast. And that is causality, right? Causality is happening in a way that I can't even comprehend. Mm. And so as we then eventually have brain interfaces that can hook up to the internet, we just essentially become one mind, right? Um, across time. So like there's this theory which is like um, the Christian God is a piece of software uh, and the Christian God is essentially a self. If you imagine you aren't really one thing, mm -hmm. you are a bunch of cells working together and they basically run this piece of software called Cory or called Jamp or called mm -hmm. Luke that allows them to work together even though they are separate biological entities, right? And that means that they have to work together because the, that is the best chance they have for survival. Um, well, the, the one idea is that God is essentially a self that is spanning across multiple brains. So if you have this software called God, and I have this software called God, and Jamp has this software called God, and we all have roughly the same God, then we can cooperate because we both have the same system of ethics, we both have the same beliefs about the universe, etc. And that God guides all of our um, actions and movements in a similar way, so we can roughly work together. And that is, is a self spanning multiple brains in the same way that Bitcoin is a piece of software that's running across multiple computers and the Bitcoin mm. network <clears throat> exists across multiple computers. Eventually, we could get to the point where humanity has a self because of the causal links created between us by brain-computer interfaces and the internet and the, the outputs of one human affecting the outputs of every other human, you could have a self booted online that spans across all of our minds. Yeah. Now, let's... That is and a, that's really cool. It is very cool. Because why shouldn't it? In the way that your two hemispheres are connected and then create one self across both minds. Yeah. I mean, you say something that's interesting in that... I mean, this is something I've been thinking about a little bit recently as well. That you say that, you know, you've got all those cells, those tiny little cells that make up you. And not just, not just the sort of cells that are you, right? You've got all the different sort of bacteria and all, and all mm. that. But not any individual one of them knows that they are part of a greater thing mm. necessarily right they're just doing their job like a red blood cell is just doing its job doesn't even have a nucleus it's just like ah oxygen cool okay bye oxygen nice it's just going around doing that thing 
You know, you've got cells that are just there digesting. You've got bacteria that are just trying to survive and they're surviving in the environment of your gut, but also they're producing um, molecules that are used in your brain um, that are transmitted via the gut-brain axis, right? Mm. We've done an episode on this, the science of, what is it? 21, that's something about guts. There we go, episode 21. Yeah. Um, none of those individual cells necessarily know that they are part of a greater mm. thing, that they are producing a consciousness. Like I don't think an individual one of my brain cells could know that it is being utilized in a fashion in which it is creating this sentence that I'm saying right now, mm. or it is creating the thoughts that are um, influencing this sentence, right? I don't think a single one of them will know that. So it's interesting that we all like to think of ourselves as being very separate entities, when ultimately, if we looked at it, the very, the most basic point of it, we are essentially just um, chemicals that are uh, chemical reactions that are continuing themselves. Their, their goal is just to continue themselves indefinitely, right? At the, at the very basic level, that is what life is. Mm. It's interesting to me that we we think of ourselves as such separate uh, outside of outside of the sort of um, that's not this that's not the specific re that's not the specific definition. Well, I was but, just going to say that they're not they're not. I know you know this, mm -hmm. but they're not chemicals whose goal is to continue themselves. They are structures that, by the laws of nature, they are continued. Continuing I'm, happens. The, I'm saying yeah. the chemical reactions continue themselves. Not the chemicals. The, the chemical reactions continue themselves. You are a, you are a. A collection of chemical reactions. Yes, sure. And so they like loop. They're a causal yeah. loop. Yeah. 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 It's, it's basically self-sustaining chemical reactions yeah. that uh, exist sort of outside of sort of, uh, what's it? Sort of not homeostasis. Um, the word for balanced. Um, when it's something is equilibrium. Yeah. Equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Outside of that sort of equilibrium, it's it it um they they exist outside of that sort of chemical equilibrium, but they rep they replicate and continue themselves. Mm. But we think of ourselves as being all very separate things. Mm -hmm. But then equally in that, like I said, a single cell of my body doesn't know that it's part of a greater whole necessarily. We, why would we think we of ourselves as... We might already be that and we yeah, wouldn't know. Why would you think of ourselves as being a part of a greater whole when we, we don't know? There, yeah. there, and when you think about it, there is some kind of consciousness that comes from a group of people. Like a country can do... We talk about countries doing things. Obviously that's a facet of our language, but we talk about countries doing things. We talk about cities doing things. And... Yeah, often it can come down to the sort of choices of an individual, but that individual in many places is nominated by the, the country, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. By multiple people. Multiple people can act as a single sort of consciousness in a sense, right? Yeah. It's just, it's interesting that we don't, it's weird that we don't think about it like that. We all like, we like to think of ourselves as being very individual and very unique and very separate from the rest of the world, but... It's because of our economic system has taught us to be like that. Mm -hmm. Well, sure. I mean, I mean, I think even in, even in, um, even in other economic systems, we'd still think of ourselves as being separate from the world. Not like, and separate from other people. I don't think, I don't mean separate in terms of like better than or different than. I just mean separate as in like, there was a separation between me your skin and your everything else yeah like your ego yeah 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 hmm. yeah maybe if we live forever we could get off of that that idea yeah but, mm. but i mean the thing is is that there are there are reports of people who transcend that really um there are reports where um you essentially undergo a process whereby you be you gain subjective awareness of the fact that that's not true and it is an illusion um yeah in, in ego death yeah hmm. Where, where it's not just that you um, decide or decide to act in a way that is sort of altruistic. It's where you gain the subjective realization that the whole time you thought that was going on, it was an illusion. Mm. Um, in, I guess, I mean, I'm, I don't know what this is. I haven't had this experience. But like, I suppose in the same way that like um, on a bigger level, like when we look at history and we go, this person discovered this thing and that like ignores the fact that there were loads of people who were also instrumental in that. Mm. There's loads of people who um, contributed to that before that person. There are loads of um, happenstances that happened that like, so, although it probably didn't happen, an apple fell on Newton's head, like all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Like that knowledge was there to be discovered. Someone happened to discover it at a certain time. Had they not, someone else would have discovered it. And lots of other discoveries done by other people led to that discovery. Mm -hmm. So our 
want as human beings to create simplistic stories out of the world um, leads to our way of talking about things, but that might not be really how those things are happening. We're just sort of surfing this little wave of happenings. Yeah, I think I think what you're kind of touching on there is the fact that our the way that our language bleeds into our understanding or influences or really just creates our understanding of the world, right? Mm. And limited language creates limited understanding. And that is not necessarily fine, but it, it is workable if you can if you can sort of pull yourself out of that and realize the language that we use is limited. And since our understanding often comes from language or it, it is explained itself in language, then our understanding will be limited. And mm -hmm. then if you pull yourself out of that a bit, you can at least recognize that. But I feel like a lot of people generally don't. Well, we're not taught to. No, of course, it's not, an easy thing not to teach the, Yeah, people, no, absolutely not of their own. But we're like, not taught to. Yeah, no, not of their own accord. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. as in, it's, it's definitely something that should be taught. But it, yeah. I, yeah, I just, I think the issue is that there doesn't seem to be much benefit to society of people um, thinking that. Do you know what I mean? I think it's a wonderful benefit society to not thinking that, but not if your goal is to um, sort of amass resources and reproduce and spread across the galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what if I If your mean. goal is to be happy, there's quite a lot of benefit to it. <laughs> happy doesn't make me money, Luke. Um, <laughs> um, so let's get back to lobsters. So we were talking about lobsters being immortal. Um, and... The thing is that, yeah, they can repair their DNA, uh, but they're not, and when we say they're biologically immortal, that doesn't mean that you'll see a lobster living forever. <laughs> Lobsters do die. Because they get eaten. Not just from getting eaten. As oh, well. they grow too big and can't get crushed by their own oh. shells. Well, it's not that they get crushed by their own shells specifically. You're, you're on the right track. So what happens is lobsters molt their shells. Yeah. Uh, or molt their sort of exoskeletons. And molting obviously takes energy to do. Uh. Um, and it's, at some point, lobsters can get so large and the energy required for molting so much that they just die of exhaustion yeah. or oh. they stop they stop molting um and what and if they stop molting basically bacteria will get into the cracks and and all of that in their in their sort of um their shells and they'll just get infected and die so Sad. they're not immortal um in, in they're not entirely immortal in but they don't experience sense. senescence yeah. and yeah. i think it's an interesting thing to talk about with us because if you okay we can stop the telomeres from shortening but then you've got another issue. You've got another issue. You've got another issue. No, the issues is that we can't foresee. Exactly. I yeah. mean, we've been able to extend life quite like quite a long time, but we've then <laughs> now that we're extending life. Oh boy, cancer is an issue now, right? Yeah, cancer right. is an issue, right? Yeah. Like it's just all of like there are always going to be other problems to solve, but I, I don't think it means we should stop. I think it's interesting. I don't think we should avoid death, but I think extending extending life is fine. I think one thing that is. Kind of my philosophy with TikTok, at least. When TikTok introduced three-minute videos, I was like, awful. Worst thing they could have done. Mm. Some people are using it effectively in that there is not an, like there is information that you cannot get into a single TikTok, and they're sort of teaching you something, and it's good. Or it's like a song, and it's like, oh, cool, I can listen to this whole song on TikTok now. Good. Mm -hmm. But most people, it seems to be, are using three-minute TikToks to tell a story very slowly. Yes. Or to let a joke run out longer than it should. There'll be like a minute and a half of just fluff on the beginning that mm -hmm. just didn't need to be there exactly it's the same when people split things into multiple multiple parts yeah could have been one part yeah. splitting into two to get more views and it might be a similar thing with extending life wherein like is a longer life necessarily a more it does does it necessarily have more value as in can you will you cram in more positive experiences or will you become complacent and be like oh, i've got time yeah you know it, like a longer like and what's your selection process for people who who extend their life do you just blanket extend everyone's life well obviously you're, you're saying that the selection process will be wealth yeah very likely unless we have some kind of um upheaval in our um system which allows us to sort of more more carefully select for um who extends life but then the problem is, is you then get into if you don't just give extended life to everyone blanket you get into basically um What's that nasty thing called? Eugenics. Eugenics, where you're like trying to select, oh, well, we're selecting for these traits. It's like, well, but that's not objectively a positive trait. What about these things? Oh, mm -hmm. well, so like, do you just have to blanket? Because that's the thing is that if we, the opposite of eugenics is basically what we have, where we try to prolong life as, as long as possible for everyone without any, um, you know, uh, I, I, at least in our country with the NHS, with um, public health care, um, ideally, you try to pro prolong life for everybody where possible, within reason, um, uniformly, regardless mm -hmm. of um, any... You don't have any selection system for that. 
um, because selection systems in and of themselves, when it comes to like prolonging life and allowing people to live, are ultimately going to be problematic. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we haven't tried because it's so horrible to even contemplate. Yeah, yeah. I think I saw a Love, Death, and Robots um, segment about this, about people that uh, everyone had like ex- been able to extend their life so they don't die, and so no one was allowed to have kids. And I think, I mean, the choice that you've got there, and this is probably an interesting thing for a sci-fi story, is that you've mm-hmm. got the choice between living forever or having kids. Which one do you want to do? That's really interesting. So you're allowed a certain number of you're allowed to create a certain number of years, and mm-hmm. it's like either you create three lives that are eighty years long, or you create one life that is a hundred or two hundred forty years long. Yeah, or you could be like, okay, well, I'm gonna live forever. Uh, I'm gonna live until two hundred because you'd probably remain looking fairly young. I'm gonna live till mm-hmm. two hundred, and I'm gonna be like, okay, well, I'll have kids now, and I'll know. Then you know that when you have kids, you wait until they're maybe like a certain age, and then you pop off. Cool. You're only allowed to have two kids between, you know, two uh, people. Two people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But who enforces that? <laughs> it's such a weird thing to enforce. <laughs> Government comes down and they uh you know, <laughs> They kill you. Yeah. For having kids. Well That is you, essentially what they do. <laughs> well they don't kill you for having kids. You stop getting your you only get you, you stop getting your and your Taylor Murray's injections or whatever. Because you, know. you had kids. Yeah, because you had kids. But that is Okay, willing, willful, willful execution. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm not saying that should happen or whatever. I'm <laughs> saying it will. I'm just saying it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, line to go down. But yeah, so uh, bring it back to the lobsters again. As I said, lobsters can't actually live forever uh, because while they don't experience senescence, well, uh, they do continue growing, and that means they need to shed their exoskeletons. But it gets to a certain point where that takes up too much energy, and they end up just dying of exhaustion. Or some really old lobsters will stop shedding, and they'll end up dying from infection or something like that. Um, and this is the issue as well. We don't know how old lobsters are. We can't. It's difficult to tell how old mm. lobsters are. We think the oldest one might be. Uh, well, I think the average is about thirty-one years, and average for females is uh, fifty-four. Um, I think that's in the wild. So you know, lobsters can live a long time, but not necessarily as long as us. Yeah. But you know, still, um, if we if they were able to solve, let's say, that sort of shedding issue, they might be able to live for um, quite a bit. Um, And to bring it back to this sort of lobster cult, the idea is that uh, because lobsters can, if they're able to molt, as far as we're aware, live technically forever, you help the lobster molt Mm. so that it doesn't expend all its energy and end up dying (laughs) from its inability to molt until it grows to an enormous size um, and becomes a leviathan lobster god. Of course, the problem there is we all know the square cube law. It would end up um, just dying under its own weight um, and it wouldn't really work. That's why we need to Sad. crack the Higgs boson so we can remove gravity from the equation. Oh, fantastic. That's the first thing we got to do. If we get rid of gravity, we got to use it to make a lobster god. Look, we're floating through a rock, floating on a rock through space. If, we, if we're going to be here, we may as well do something interesting. <laughs> like, we're not doing any weird, interesting things like making a gigantic lobster god for the mm. sake of it. Yeah, I'm like, going to be honest. Yeah. The best we're doing is like theater. Come on, giant lobster god. I feel like end of the world via um, global pandemic or global warming. Giant is lobster just, overlord. It's boring, right? Mm. Give us a giant lobster overlord. Yeah, Give us a Jurassic exactly. Park or something, right? Yeah. If we're going to go out, let's go out with a bang. Exactly. That should be our pyramids. We should make a giant lobster so that when people look back, they go, wow, how did they do that? Oh. Must have been aliens. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Luke, because we're white. White people don't need aliens. Oh, uh, okay. Right. You're right. <laughs> we are the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's the end of the episode. Thank you all for listening. I do have one last thing to do before we go. Oh, it's, it's a quick, quick fire quiz. quiz. Oh yes. Dun, 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 dun. So the r- lobster edition. So the rules of quick fire quiz is very simple. I ask one question between the two of you. Just one question. The first person to buzz in with the correct answer after I finish answering the question wins. What do they win, Jamp? Nothing. That's gosh darn right. A free lobster dinner. Luke, what's your buzzer? Fuck's Little sake. lobster yeah. pincers. Jam, what's your buzzer? Mine was going to be like. Get your own buzzer. That's perfectly fine. Both of those are good. Are they just to nothing? Because my mine's are like. Yours is a higher frequency. I'm sitting in front of you both. I can see you. Oh, okay, fine. Listeners, you're screwed. Listeners at home. So, my question for you is How many pairs of legs do true lobsters have pincers on? I think Jamp made the noise first. No way. That's definitely not true. You started true. snapping your fingers first. That is the noise. That's the noise. It also comes along with the... T- 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 no, I didn't do that when I gave you my noise. All right, come on. Go on then, Jam. Oh, what? Nope. Six limbs. 
Oh. Wait, no? what was... Incorrect. It? What? Pincers on... Oh, pincers. <gasps> oh, shit. Wait, hold on. What did you say? Six. Yeah, that is right. That's right, yeah. Yeah, six. I was asking... I was trying to think whether I, whether I asked pairs or not. Yeah. The whole debacle right. about the... About right. the... He is right. The buzzer. You win. You win, Jam. Well done. Thank you. Good job. Don't scare me. I'm Such furious. A sore Don't loser. scare me I'm going like to pinch that. you with my pincers. Okay, go for it. Give me one now. Ow, ow. Why did you make that hurt? Okay. Because they're pincers. <laughs> the point of pincers. They're not, they're not playing around. Okay, so <laughs> that is it for this week's episode. Before we go, we would like to thank all of our patrons with a very special thank you to executive producers Ashley Muller and Finn TZ. And also, thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday and why not leave us a nice wee comment. You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys or you can find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com Oh, that's SciGuysPod at gmail.com Oh, that's SciGuysPod at gmail.com You can follow me at not Corey everywhere. You can follow me at Jamkin everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cutforth everywhere. Goodbye. Snip, Goodbye. Snip, snip, snip. Bye, bye, bye.